Hello, everyone, and welcome. This is Jim Haviland, uh, Managing Director of uh, Mobile Thought Leaders and Digital Transformation Thought Leaders. And today we're going to have a great conversation. I've got some great guests here today to talk about uh, the outcome from our 2018 mobile strategy research. Uh, this research uh, project involved uh, mobile thought leaders all over the world uh, and has been uh, digested by our experts and put together in a, uh, in a white paper. And we're going to look at some of those results today and kind of frame them up for folks. Uh, for those of you who have not participated in these events before, uh, uh, we'll, we'll give you some more instructions, but the, uh, the content itself will be available for download. Uh, the event itself is recorded, so you can share it with your friends and family to as much as you'd like to, and uh, come back and, and listen to us again. Uh, and we do have a Q&A down there, down there at, at, the, at the bottom of your screen. Please feel free to, uh, to ask questions as we go along. Uh, it is at a Mobile Thought Leaders event, it is meant to be interactive and, and involve folks. So before I introduce everybody, uh, for those of you, for this is the, your first Mobile Thought Leaders event, I should tell you that Mobile Thought Leaders is a global organization of peers working in mobility and digital transformation. Uh, it is a membership-based organization. The cost of membership is participation. So congratulations, you all now Mobile Thought Leaders. Uh, we do online events like this. We do live events in cities all over the world. Uh, and we do research projects, of course, which is part of the content for today. We'd love to have you join us in a more active way. One of the things that people often come to us for is to, to find people doing things like they are, that they want to, you know, peers that they want to talk to about projects that they're taking on. And we would be happy to make those uh, member concierge introductions. Go to mobilethoughtleaders.com for more information. And today's event is uh, uh, sponsored by our, our good friends and, and, and regular sponsors for, uh, for Mobile Thought Leaders, uh, uh, good folks at uh, VMware. And uh, let me introduce today's panelists. Jeff Mitchell, how are you doing today? Doing great. How are you doing, Jim? Appreciate uh, I'm part of this. Absolutely. Uh, and where are you coming to us from today? Uh, I'm in Baltimore, in Baltimore, Maryland today. Oh, very good. Very good. Uh, yeah, I'm in um, unusually chilly Los Angeles today, uh, um, and uh, I'm a little disappointed because I think it's warmer back in Cleveland where I normally am. Uh, but uh, thanks for joining us today. And I know uh, uh, you've had a chance to look at this research. You were actually quoted in the white paper that came from it. Um, uh, were you surprised by some of the outcomes here, or does it kind of fit with what you think is uh, the, the, the flow of things looks like these days? Yeah, no, I thought it was pretty consistent. I mean, there's clearly a, you know, a different maturity curve out there for different organizations. But, you know, as we work with some of the leaders and, and, and as they continue to innovate and, you know, build upon their mobility foundation, um, I, I found a lot of the, a lot of the material very, uh, very uh, similar. Uh, and at the same time, you know, there were some great insights, I think, you know, where we can take the next step. So it was, uh, I thought it was, uh, you know, very beneficial. Excellent. Well, thank you, sir. And uh, and Harjo, I know maturity and, and and mapping that maturity curve is one of your favorite topic topics. Harjo is uh, CEO, the uh, vice president of consulting for for uh, for Vox Mobile. You are up in uh, Vancouver today. I am. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. And uh, and I know uh, Harjo. You, you know you were I I think part of putting together the the, the research project. Um, and I know you've got and. As we're preparing to, for today, I know you've got some great examples of people who are on the uh, the advanced side of that of that maturity curve, and there's so much learning to be drawn from them uh, for for other folks looking to to, to advance their programs. Don't you think? Yeah, the uh, the the spectrum um, is just astonishing from the lowest maturity situations uh, where clients are barely leveraging even most basic MDM capabilities uh, right to some of the most advanced use cases. So we are now starting to see a larger organization starting to take advantage of some of the really high maturity capabilities uh, built into solutions such as VMware. Yeah, fantastic. So I, I look forward to talking to some of that today. So as I said, we, yeah, we're actually – uh, referencing some materials from this uh, uh, 2018 mobile strategy research report. Uh, this is available for download if you want to look through all 18 pages of it. Some great uh, graphs and data in there. And the data, for if you participate in the research project, you do have access to the de-identified data. You just simply have to contact us to, to get access to that, and uh, you have to sign away your firstborn. But that's, uh, otherwise, it's, it's, uh, it's freely available. Um, and so what we're going to do today is uh, we're going to talk through 
the uh, five core trends that were in there. And this is, these are things that have been put together uh, both from uh, the, the, the research data itself and also from conversations we had post that to try to understand people's responses. Um, and uh, I think it, what's interesting here to me is there always are themes and uh, a hard show, but, but sometimes it feels to me like the research, by the time we get to the research and we're actually presenting it back, that maybe things have shifted a bit. Um, and number five here, we'll, we'll, we'll talk about this some more, but enterprise ability is being advanced by small incremental steps, yet offering big returns. It seems like a, I'm seeing just as many people, you know, really this, this pace of really strategic projects really picking up uh, at, at this point. Do you feel that as well? Well, it depends on the sophistication okay. <laughs> of the organization. Um, yeah, right. I mean, it's, okay. it's just been a constant firefight of, you know, in some cases, two steps back and one step forward. Uh, and, and hopefully organizations that uh, really put a, lo a lot of focus towards mobility uh, and that strategy and, and really uh, offboarding the tactical uh, challenges within the organization start to shift that equation uh, to start taking two steps forward and one step back. And, and the vendors themselves... Um, such as Apple and Google and, and, and the others are starting to help in this area uh, as they start to really solidify, um, you know, their, uh, their deployment uh, uh, mechanisms. Uh, so, you know, Jim, you and I have, uh, as well as Jeff, we've all lived through just incredible fragmentation uh, with how a deployment mechanism should proceed. And we're starting to see consolidation and, and the dust settling over there. A good example there is enterprise file sync and sharing. Right. So yeah. that, that was, you know, that was just at the top of the concern uh, only a few years ago. Now we're starting to see organizations get on top of that decision and allowing them to focus more on transformation. Yeah, and I, ma I imagine, you know, Jeff, you've got great visibility to more of this. And we'll, let's, let's maybe delve into that, that first trend here that um, it, I think people have been talking about mobility and digital transformation being strategic priorities, but the, the actual you know, we can see here the, the results over a period of time, the, the actual putting those things into practice and being able to move from tactical activities and tactical focus to strategic focus. Um, do, do you feel like there's, there's a, a wave uh, happening at this point where we're starting to accelerate now that everything's maturing a bit more? Yeah, we definitely do. I mean, I think there's, you know, there's kind of two different two different ways to, to look at it. I think in certain industries where like in retail, where there's been a chief digital officer and that, you know, whole retail modernization has been going on for, you know, a couple of years that was, you know, really driven by the omni-channel need and kind of mobility supported it. Um, you know, clearly retail has been a leader. I think in healthcare, you've seen a lot of transformation. Anything we can do to, you know, more satisfy the patient is going to drive funding and, and capabilities finance, you know, so those three industries are unique. But I also think we're, we're also seeing where there's maybe a, a VP of workplace services um, outside of those industries where you're, where you are seeing in user computing come together. In the past, there was the mobility team, and then there was the desktop team. And we are starting to see, you know, those two organizations uh, integrate into a, you know, a common in user computing team. And then that's driving you know, some of the innovation. So regardless if it's by industry or by, you know, kind of function, um, the strategic priorities, you know, continue to kind of shift and evolve. Well, that, I think that's a great, um, that's a great point. And I, you know, I wanted to, you know, you know, the Vox has been talking for a while about, hey, everybody sees this potential for breakthrough innovation, but things get in the way. And as we talk about the M gap being what, you know, what gets in the way of getting to breakthrough innovation. But I think that's great, you know, that's obviously, uh, I, I completely agree, and that's kind of what, what I thought was a great marker for this. And uh, I guess I'm looking for both your responses on this. But what I'm what I'm seeing is that the, your approach to endpoints and unified endpoint management, as opposed to MDM and, and EMM, these this notion. And then you know, I, I said this part, this paper here from Gardner kind of uh, agrees with this. It, it's a it's one of those important steps towards showing whether you're actually uh, maturing, and it's not necessarily causal. It, it's uh, well co uh, corroborated. You know, it, uh, if you can figure out how to deploy projects that uh, have strategic outcomes that involve different types of endpoints, or if you 
reorganize your organization so you're taking a more unified endpoint management view of it as opposed to just an MDM view of the, of the world, you can get to that place where you're uh, uh, bringing all this data together in new ways and having better insights and start to do those strategic things because every, everybody's participating in this new, more mature environment. Uh, so and I know, uh, and, and the tools, Jeff, are really built for that. I know, I know uh, Workspace ONE as an evolution from AirWatch is all about that, right? No, you're absolutely right. And, and hats off to, you know, Microsoft, Apple, and Google. So we're, you know, we're the, where Mac OS, Windows 10, and Chrome has come, you know, takes advantage of really this full kind of modern management, you know, paradigm that mobility has driven over the last three to four years with iOS and Android. Um, and, and not only around the desktop and, and the mobile devices, but if you get into some of the rugged wearable devices, you get into IoT, you know, we're really getting to this point where we have this unified endpoint management platform. And as we get a platform, we truly can get, you know, any access, any app, any device, and, and create a, a really cool consumer experience, you know, for the end user, uh, but at the same time, uh, being able to allow a consistent, highly enterprise secure you know, approach to access of data and corporate resources. So we are at this kind of real inflection point where, you know, UEM, um, and if you can couple it, what we're trying to do with Workspace ONE, where you've got, you know, a common experience to get to your apps and your corporate resources, regardless of what endpoint it is, um, that's allowing us now to create a platform to then go innovate on top of and kind of take these next, you know, big return yet incremental steps. You know, and I think that's a, that's a great point, Jeff, because I think the, the, the conversation that I'm having quite a bit is I, as people try to, people that are, that are lower on the uh, maturity curve uh, and uh, are, are still trying to digest what the benefit of going from a, an EMM approach to a UEM approach and what the differences are. It, and it's, it's really, I think that the, the two big chunks that people start to get after a while is one, the user experience of what I go get, having that be a unified thing, regardless of what device I'm, I'm on, regardless of which network I'm on, regardless of, of uh, you know, anything else. And, and also from the security and management perspective, being able to create policy and visibility that allows me to make decisions that um, apply to all these things as opposed to a patchwork of policies. Uh, and I, I think both those things resonate, but Harjo, from your perspective, uh, there's a, there's a, isn't there, is there, it seems like there's still a lot of maturity that has to happen to even know what to do with all that stuff. Is that a fair statement? Oh, they're, they're absolutely, well, absolutely. Oh, go ahead, go ahead here. Yeah, I was just going to say, I mean, this, this is not a technology challenge, right? I mean, the tools have now yeah. been uh, developed and presented. This, this is an organizational challenge, right? I mean, it, plenty of organizations, you know, the, the lowest maturity uh, category we tend to find across the board when doing our analysis um, is, is not an in infrastructure or necessarily security and compliance. It's almost always with governance. Right. And, and these endpoints that we can now unify they're siloed within the organization. You have one right. team, one manager, one director and VP responsible for workstations, a totally different one that might be responsible for telephony, and then another one for mobility who just happens to be, you know, probably not even at VP level. Mobility is being run out of some guy's desk, uh, you know, on an old 20-year-old <laughs> PC or something, right? Um, and they, they just, the organization never rationalizes the dramatic impact that one decision can have on the related areas. Of course, you know, a robust, mature deployment of mobility will have a significant impact on workstation refresh, right? We've got a field force deploying 2,000, um, you know, not mobile devices. This is a field force of 2,000 workers that already had mobile devices and laptops. And a robust deployment of uh, VMware and AirWatch and analytics and applications, suddenly they're leaving their laptops behind, right? And it wasn't a new... Uh, hardware deployment, it just suddenly made that entire laptop deployment obsolete. And the same it thing is what's happening with telemetry. Yeah. It, yeah. Well, I mean, it's just, it's a waste. All those endpoints are, are to some degree a waste. And telephony is a great example with um, the VoIP uh, handsets that are sitting on people's desks that could, you know, they're, they range from $1,200 to $1,800 a pop, right? 
So the opportunity here is, is extraordinary, but it has to start at governance, not necessarily the technology. Yeah, and Jeff, I got I got to imagine for you that's 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 uh, um, frustrating because certainly the tool sets have matured dramatically. What people you can do with them is extraordinary. So you can't really sell entirely on, on a feature set because the problem isn't that the features aren't there; it's people who don't know how to digest them. No, you're spot on. It's a little bit of the carrot and the stick. And I think for the first three to four years, up until a couple of years ago, it was really more the stick. It was you have to, uh, you know, install an MDM to um, do whatever. Um, it's corporate policy. Um, and I think now more recently, and I can, I'll just speak, you know, specifically at VMware internally, you know, up until two years ago, we probably only had 25%. We got 20,000 employees, you know, kind of deployed with MDM. Today we have 100%, and the difference yeah. was when we launched Workspace ONE, which, which we became a carrot to the end user, and all of a sudden through a single sign-on, an individual could get to any app you know, on any device with a single sign-on experience. That experience in itself is what really drove the carrot or the, the use case um, you know, for people, for the employees at VMware to adopt the technology and really utilize it. Now. If you're going to get corporate resources, whether it's access to data uh, or, or what have you, new mobile apps, um, it's all done through that Workspace ONE kind of experience. So by going to the carrot, literally BASC, our CIO, we, we just got number three internally of computer world, of internal IT departments, went from, you know, Dr. No to, you know, kind of the hero by all of a sudden, you know, making – uh, the 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 employee experience more like you know the consumer experience which is which is you know the nirvana where we're trying to get to so I do think that organizational challenge and how you approach it uh, makes a big difference and we're living it every day at VMware. Yeah, that, that, that's great stuff. I think you know what, so so that's that's the, okay, maybe that's one of the takeaways we'll have for today is uh, if you are an IT department that's you, that's sick of playing. Uh, you know, VP of no, or doctor no. You can actually be a hero uh, if you if you if you can embrace this new way of delivery, so that actually you're taking away friction as opposed to creating friction. I think that's that's a that's a great that's a great one. So let's talk a little bit about this uh, this notion too of what the the thing that even beyond just the things getting better uh, for an experience and also for for governance, this is actually a new layer of of technology and and outcome that we can we can derive from this, which is the analytics. So uh, there's a, pa a Gartner paper here. I, I've got, got a graphic from it talking about uh, new layers of analytics, especially when you're talking about UEM and bringing together all the data sets and and being able to see that data in all one place. And I know uh, Jeff, you've got um, uh, as an example of that, the new intelligence service uh, within within VMware, looking at the aggregation of all this data and then being able to do some analytics around it uh, uh, from various perspectives. Um, and that's how, how long has this been around and, and do people know about it yet? Uh, I mean, it, uh, because it's the only the mature organizations, I think, that will even realize that they should want this. <laughs> yeah, yeah, uh, no, you know, you're, you're spot on. And, but, but this is the benefit of UEM, unified, you know, how, by having all the endpoints, all of a sudden, if you build the rest of the slide out, you know, as, as we aggregate, you know all the data points, um, and then as we're all as we are able to kind of correlate and use some machine learning, we've uh, we so we rolled this out at the beginning of the year um, in Q, in the first quarter. We've got it live um, in six regions, every everywhere from Tokyo, Sydney to the U.S. We've got about 2,000 production customers. Uh, there's probably you know there's less than five million devices we currently have on the service. However, we're picking up like almost, you know, 250 to 500 million different events kind of per day. Um, and if you go to the next slide, you know, we're currently just at, you know, what I'd call is, you know, entry level, which is around, you know, some very kind of resource optimization type use cases. So, you know, whether it's looking at the OS and the vulnerabilities, whether it's looking at, you know, kind of updates that are needed across uh, operating systems, um, we can track operating system upgrades, um, all this, you know, as you see the 10 use cases, it's fairly kind of blocking and tackling, but it's the baseline. Um, but as we're collecting this data, we're going to get into more user experience. So we're going to understand the app engagement, app performance, behavioral analytics. Uh, from a security standpoint, we're going to be able to get into more 
intelligent patching, this risk scoring concept. We'll talk a little bit more, you know, in your I think section four of the security piece. But it's pretty exciting to get these this level of data, uh, and now it's incumbent upon us. And there's a lot of reports that can be kind of written against this data that our customers are able to leverage. So, you know, we're in the first inning um, of this game, but the analytics are here. And I think there's uh, really some useful data that's, you know, going to be leveraged from this. You know, and it's, you know, it's, I, I appreciate you're saying, oh, this is just really the basics of it. But, you know, for, I think for some of our uh, uh, mobile thought leaders, they've been asking that, you know, they wish they knew this kind of stuff for a long time. You know, this is, there's some really basic stuff that they felt like, I wish I could just predict when that battery is going to die. I wish I could just, predict, you know, knew more about adoption. And I know, uh, Harjo, you've got a, you were able to share some information here about how one client, and we can't talk about the name of them, but they're, uh, they're, they're, they're all the way using this stuff and coming up with amazing insights into usage and adoption. Yeah, I actually, I, I want to I take a minute here to really describe in detail uh, what this client did because, you know, it, it's easy to talk about the holistic capabilities, um, yeah. but then how how does it get deployed in detail? This this particular client has a field force of about 2,000 field workers. They go into people's homes uh, to install equipment. Um, they are uh, they they manage their their jobs. You know, so they're assigned a, a job or a ticket to go to someone's house. Um, you know, through a, um, a web interface. Uh, that's been mobilized to iPhone and Android. Um, and that's what they were doing before. Um, but the experience was very poor before we introduced AirWatch in their environment. Um, they were doing advice-wide VPN to access this internal website, uh, which took a lot of credentials, took a lot of time, and then they had to cancel the VPN. So we're going back to the carrot and stick comment that, uh, that Jeff made, which is fantastic. Uh, and highly applicable that the, the stick just doesn't work anymore, not with most clients and not with most users. The carrot in this particular case was around single sign-on, right? So it was a per app VPN deployment. So we'll deploy the web clip to the, uh, to the workers on both iPhone and Android to access this website. We're going to enable it with per app VPN using uh, VMware's AirWatch solution. Um, and so they only have to put in their credentials once a day and then it retains it for the remainder of the day. And that dramatically saves them uh, a lot of effort. And they don't have to uh, use the VPN manually, right, to enable and disable. So that in and of itself easily justified um, the, the, the business case uh, for this deployment. So fantastic. So the end users now are, are loving their devices. They don't have to drag their laptops around. This is the same field force I was referring to earlier with the laptop displacement. Uh, so that wow. in and of itself okay. was was fantastic. So they're monitoring the laptop uh, collapse uh, in, in use quite closely, so they can actually remove that from the uh, refresh cycle, all uh, in increasing the business case even more dramatically. I mean, it's it's almost a laughable business case at this point. Then we did the cherry on the top, the holy grail of application deployments, which is analytics. So right. the application was deployed, the website was deployed using the VMware browser not with the Safari browser, okay? Now the reason okay. that that was done was because the VMware browser is built in with AirWatch Analytics, AirWatch uh, APIs, right? So the AirWatch APIs right. are available to be in, integrated into any application you really want, but by default, the VMware browser has the APIs integrated, which means all the browsing activity in the VMware browser is reported back to the console and the database. Every oh, single great. bit of activity that's being provided. So how do you use that? Well, first of all, you have to, of course, warn the users that if you're gonna do personal browsing, use your Safari or your Chrome browser. So VMware browser is only for work. So how do you use that? What they would pull is on a weekly basis, they would pull all the browsing analytics for the entire field force, every website that was being visited. And because they deployed this application as a web clip, they could track the underlying activity for every single employee and when they were going to which underlying site. So what you can see here is not just the overall metrics hour by hour for the entire field force, but down to individual employees. You can't see that, that second uh, image very well, yeah. but you can now report to managers and directors 
the individual employees' activities, when they had to authenticate, which are the red dots, when they got a job, which is the dark green ones, when they completed the job, right, all through the day, right? And you can actually monitor when they're having trouble, if they have to authenticate too often, and other activity. This is the holy grail, right? Not for IT. This is the interesting thing, right? This is not right. that beneficial to the IT organization or the ones that are line of Airwatch. business. Yeah, yeah. This is the line of business. This is mind-blowing information that they've been desperate for for ages. So I've never witnessed a better and more powerful deployment and a higher maturity uh, example uh, ever. But you know I'm now showcasing this with every client we have because the application is incredible, including with our healthcare clients. So uh, we're very, very excited about what they've done. But, and I'm glad you went into detail on that because I think it, what's interesting to me is that the, the cost elements of this project were not extraordinary. They, they were going to do an MDM, EMM, UEM thing anyway. And uh, so the single sign-on, uh, that uh, uh, identity manager comes with Workspace ONE. So they've already got that kind of stuff built in. So it's just about... All of this came from configuration, not from deploying net new stuff. They didn't have to go change what they were doing with their application because it, it, it was browser-based. So really, the, the cost of getting to this, in, this information was that there was no real delta in cost except for figuring it out and configuring it. Is that, am I reading that right? Well, in fact, a ton of our clients are getting this data and not looking at it. Okay. <laughs> right. I mean, so I mean, because they, they, they've, yeah. they've, yeah. they've deployed the tunnel, they've deployed uh, Unified Access Gateway, they've deployed the VMware browser, and then they didn't realize that these analytics were being collected and, and stored in the database and then getting deleted after 30 days. Right. Wow. So I mean, okay. it's it's just this gold mine of information. We got this proof of concept up and running in six weeks for yeah. this client based on a pretty standard AirWatch deployment, and because the the application being deployed was already a web link. It, it, the endpoint application didn't have to be adjusted at all. No changes made to the actual application or the website. Wow. Okay. Well, Jeff, I, I, I got to imagine that, that all this sounds uh, both uh, encouraging and discouraging because um, amazing tool set um, underutilized by a lot of people. So the opportunity set is huge at this point. No, you're, you're spot on. And we, you know, we're, you know, you know, we're, we're trying to work with our customers and, you know, Vox, you guys do as much as, as anybody as far as making sure, you know, the value is kind of realized. And um, I, th I think, though, as new use cases are coming on, that seems to kind of trigger, you know, that next, I want to even call it a buying cycle. It could be an implementation approach or strategy. Right. And, you know, as these new use cases come on, it, it is allowing companies to kind of go back in and uh, readdress what they've invested and, and, and make sure that, you know, they're taking advantage of it as some of these additional higher end use cases are coming out. So but there is a ton of untapped potential. Yeah, um, I mean, it's really just about kind of in the current the, deployments. The full utilization of the of the tools you've already deployed. So that's that that's very interesting. So well uh so great we're, well we are uh, we're we're half a, half our time away and we haven't talked about any of our other trends. So we'll, we'll I'll just uh, tell you folks, you know, we've got um, there's some more some information here about uh, looking at digital workspace, but obviously we look at this a little bit. But th this just keeps going. The more and more application places where you can you bring this information together to expand your 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 uh, data set to expand what you're able to look at and be able to strategically support your environment as opposed to just tactically keep it out of trouble. Um, and uh, if you want to talk to us about where you are in this maturity thing. Uh, Harjo's you're the master of this, and I'm happy to introduce you if you if you if you'd like to hear more about that. So let's let's move on to number two, um, and, and this kind of steps you know uh, you know relates to that. Is the business uh, lines are sidestepping uh, IT to address more specific uh, mobile needs, and that's because they can, they can. I mean, it, it, everybody has a a sense of that uh, uh, mobility can help them, or you know tra transformation can help them. Um, and you see this, you know, wide array of different departments that are now part of these initiatives. Uh, but I think this really speaks to, in Harjo, this is my experience anyway, that uh, this is really about people's impressions of IT. And it's partly because of IT's fault, partly not, where IT's been getting in the way. They've been all stick and not enough carrot. And, uh, but these new tool sets are 
create the opportunity, if not the governance, to, to, to offer more carrots. Yeah, I mean, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to cut him some slack, Jim, you know, because... <laughs> You're I, very kind. You know, IT is not close to the ground, right? I mean, because, you know, they it's understand the job, horizontal... Right? Yeah. They understand the horizontal applications that are needed, right? I mean, enforce security, enable email, calendar, and context, the basics. But now we're reaching a point of such transformation that only the lines of business are going to be familiar with what will transform their workforce, right? I mean, they can't wait for IT to come and understand their, their, you know, their community health workers uh, or their field staff or their you know, pilots as well as they do. Right. So the job of IT now is around really building a framework for application intake. Right. So and not application as in apps, but, you know, the application of mobility, the vertical application of mobility. And their job is to streamline the um, the intake of that. Right. In a, in a kind way, but also firm with security threat risk assessments and privacy impact assessments. But that that's really their fundamental job now. Yeah. And I think. We, we see the, the various consulting and analyst communities all kind of agreeing that it's it's about both sides coming together into a common language and a common set of goals. Here's a, a, a I think an interesting diagram that uh, Deloitte uh, provides on on kind of like once again meeting from that outside bit for understanding of this mission, budgeting, operating cycle that that there's transformation has to happen from the governance side of things. And then also building up from uh, uh, from the very tactical stuff that, that, that the IT already does, and the mode and the, the way that Gartner's is talking about this is this mode one versus mode two approach to how we design IT. That the, the traditional mode one stuff, where you're keeping track of the the horizontally uh, technolo- horizontal technologies, it's you, you got to have it, but that's the part you want to try to maybe get to the place where you can get all managed services and as a service type models because you need to start focusing on mode two. Um, and, and I guess, Jeff, across your visibility, do you see this thinking starting to be embraced uh, um, and that, and that to, to, as part of driving to uh, a more mature approach to, to, to mobility and transfer, transformation? Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. I mean, we... Um... We literally had a meeting a couple of weeks ago with one of our large insurance customers and the SVP of IT basically, you know, wants to build a model where, you know, IT almost becomes, you know, almost a, you know, a pipeline, you know, for apps. So the various departments, you know, instead of having the necessary involve IT, if we could build, you know, a self-service type rollout platform where, you know, you literally have business analysts that sit in these departments and, and then, you know, as initiatives get funded, you know, there's this common approach where, you know, you can kind of deploy and enable um, the line of business. So we, we are absolutely seeing, you know, both line of business and IT kind of come together and, um, you know, take advantage and, and figure out how you how you accelerate the transformation um, across. So, um, you know, there's pockets to it, but it's, you know, we're still in the early innings. Sure. Well, I, and I think to, to, to your earlier point, there, there's some very mature use cases out there, that, and we're trying to bring those in uh, to the mobile thought leaders' uh, conversations, so people can who want to move forward faster can can have some reference points. But uh, uh, I know, and I'll put a plug in for an event we've got coming up on everything as a service, talking about. Uh, uh, I think it's, it's nationwide is going to join us. They've been doing this for a while, where they're they're really all about, or you know, incre- an increasingly percentage of their IT departments. Are about enablement uh, and you know giving you know, it's all carrots you know lots of carrots to go go out and do things but enabling those independent departments to go do the things that would normal that would have been called rogue apps and rogue uh, advancement you know uh, shadow IT a couple of years ago but that's you know let that be you know let, let a thousand flowers bloom uh, and uh, we'll, we'll, we're just going to make tools to make it easier. Yeah, I'd right. mention one other one, one other thing just on that that line, Jim. I know we were Please. Well, we've done some early work with um, Capital One and a few others where we've literally taken now Workspace One, that that platform, and we've extended what we call these mobile flow uh, extensions, where you know a line of business, whether you're building, you know, you're doing an app transfer transformation or you're building out a new app, but you can take advantage of these these notification and messaging 
um, you know, capabilities of, of the operating system. So literally like today at VMware, if I get a SAP Concur uh, expense approval or I get a Workday a new higher rec uh, approval, I literally have a Workspace ONE V approve app that, that consolidates all these various actions that need to be taken through the notification system. And I simply go to one spot, regardless of where, where the app is coming, to kind of streamline my experience. And that mobile flow extension is what we can take, you know, these lines of businesses as they either modernize apps or create new apps and kind of take advantage of all the inherent security and, you know, the other elements that are kind of built into the platform. And I think by doing those types of things, better consumer experience, better worker working relationship, you know, with lines of business. Yeah, that, that's so great. And I, I think it's it obviously is going to take time before the people that want to take advantage of those will know that they're there and know how to digest them. Uh, we'll, and we'll reference some more of that as we go through some more of this, this, these, these outcomes here. But um, I, I think, you know, once again, this is one that is in the time that we've, t we've been, you know, we, we've done this research and now burned out. Personal mobility, a foregone conclusion. I think everybody gets that because absolutely everyone's carrying a supercomputer in their pocket now. And uh, that uh, but other infrastructure technology are taking new focus. And I think that's, uh, you know, some of these new things that we, that we see in the horizon, you can see a smattering of across the different parts of the use cases, you know, the, you know, threat detection and new, new security, communi secure communications p stuff. You see, you know, uh, bringing in uh, IoT things, this, this uh, file sync and share thing, you know, those, the, the focuses are broad. And the one I think I've always been saying for, you know, for a long time and saying is most important is the identity and access management. As we've already talked about today, that identity and access management being critical to creating that better user experience, but also giving you a finer control on security and management and, therefore, and then insight. Uh, it's a really kind of a linchpin of, a, of, of all these things coming together uh, in, in a meaningful way. Um, and so, so uh, Jeff, any surprises on this list for you? Uh, um, I mean, it, it doesn't, I don't look at this and go, oh yeah, that's huge. And that's really the thing. There's a lot of things that are in this that are, a lot of people are working on as opposed to one thing that everyone's got to figure out this year. Yeah, no, I, I agree with, Agree with uh, agree with all these top priorities. I do think, as you mentioned, this identity and access management is, is super critical. Um, it, it's the it's the linchpin to that you know that awesome consumer experience where you got a single sign on, um, and it's you know absolutely critical. It's been a, a huge part of Workspace One's success. Um, you may have saw recently we announced a joint you know partnership as far as with Okta um, and and some of the other partners and. You know, if we're able to take advantage of, you know, a trusted device and having conditional access based on where that trusted device is, and then allowing certain things to happen or not happen, um, that's that's where you know you kind of get the, the benefit of both. So yeah, um, it's it's super important. Yeah, and uh, Harjo, I, I I wanted to bring this in because this is actually something from uh, one of my one of my analyst friends. It's not released yet. Um, so I probably shouldn't be sharing it, but well, I like the concept so much, and I wanted to share it with you. This this notion that um, we're we're in, as part of that that story, it's not just the technologies that are that are shifting and are and are focusing going to this wide array of other things we have to bring together, but your approach to how you manage it. You know, back to your, you know, it's about governance. You know, we've taken it from this place where we're we outsource stuff that's about maintenance or just outsource services to manage services to this real as a service model where I'm buying an optimized and a continuously optimized approach. And what I'm doing is not finding a partner or finding a vendor, but, but orchestrating a set of these vendors. Uh, and that's how I get my stuff done. Um, and do, do you see that kind of working out in the more mature folks that are, that are um, taking these, these more mature use cases on? Well, yeah, it's, it's obviously, it's having a huge impact on us in particular yeah. than what we do as an organization, right? So, uh, sure. you know, even Vox has had to evolve from being responsible for maintenance to uh, to a partnership level. Uh, and, yeah. and, you know, that that's, you know, you've seen what we've had to do with our certifications uh, of our team members with, uh, with AirWatch. So the sophistication required in order to orchestrate 
this type of integration is um, is extraordinary. So the capabilities are, are incredible, and um, and Jeff's comment around the uh, partnership with Okta is, is a great example. Why are you asking your end users uh, to authenticate when we have 18 points of data that give you uh, total confirmation that they are who they are and their device right. is not <laughs> compromised. It's, it's ludicrous, right? And AirWorks right. can, you know, or VMware can easily provide that data to your, uh, to your uh, SSO partner of choice to basically say this, this device can be trusted, right? And it optimizes that experience even further. But as is indicated here, um, it goes beyond just even partner level to um, really quite sophisticated orchestration. And even Vox is evolving uh, yeah. in that direction, right? And we're, <laughs> more and more we're feeling it, right? So, yeah, 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 it, it, yeah, yeah. It's exciting stuff because you get to participate in a much more strategic level with folks. And I think that's, that's, that's uh, important. Uh, and, let's, and let's, towards that end, you know, Vox has been involved in security for, for a long time. The trend number four here, Security and support are high, are high IT priorities, and I think this is one of the things that I've seen Gartner talk about for a long time. Security is always top five when you talk about CIO priorities, but it's never number one. And, and increasingly, it has to be integrated, and the problem is more complex, just speaking here, you know, what we have, the tools are different in place, and there's no special budget for it. Really, uh, you know, I, I, I was in Europe uh, just ahead of GDPR deployment, and there were some companies that would have had special budgets, but lots of them didn't. They just, you know, everybody had to figure out how they were going to get to compliance within what they were doing because it's part of standard operating procedure now. Um, and that's, and that's, a, that's a tough, tough nut for a lot of people to crack uh, at, at this point. Um, but do, do you feel that, Jeff, that, that uh, budgets may be – you know, I guess they never do really, really keep up with, with demand. Uh, but the tool sets are there for, to, how to make it easier. Yeah, no, absolutely. There's, um, you know, there's been a lot of invested. And at the same time, you know, technologies continue to evolve. So um, I know we've got, I think, a slide coming up uh, in a couple slides just to talk a little bit about, you know, Trust Network, which, um, has been is the next you know the latest offering of workspace one intelligence, but it's 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 trying to take advantage of that ecosystem and you know understanding all the various tools and you know how do you aggregate data and um, you know predict right. and try to automate to, to uh, keep certain functions from happening. So um, it's uh, it's a tough one though. Yeah. I, so looking at the data here, uh, Harjo, uh, you know I thought it was very interesting that the uh, or the top priorities that the, that mobile application security testing. Actually, speaking to your 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 app ingestion engine, so organizations can understand what what apps are being used and whether they're secure or not. That's the only one that's really an outlier. The rest, there's a lot of you know a lot of little priorities after that. You know, you know, you know everyone's got their top priorities, but that's that's really an outlier. Uh, uh, you know, a top that's the new thing that people are trying to figure out. Yeah, and, and there isn't an easy solution there, but there is good news on, on this front. You know, we don't want to be just bad news bear here. No. Uh, so I like, I like to talk about okay. some of the positive here. The good news here is that uh, organizations are finally now starting to surrender territory on the mobile devices that is none of their business, right? Um, uh, so yeah. so we, are start, we are starting to see a shift in mentality um, around wanting to secure the, the whole endpoint uh, and just the uh, to to an area where this just let's secure the stuff that um, that is our responsibility that right matters. and so yeah, that's right. that's all that matters right and uh, and you've got um, you got the vendors playing ball you got VMware playing ball you got uh, you know managed open end capability from Apple uh, you've obviously got um, you know the Boxer advanced solution from uh, VMware and then uh, you know, and, and Google is making great strides with Android Enterprise, right? So this concept right. of, of controlling the whole phone and worrying about every uh, application on there is starting to um, to retreat. Uh, and so the application threat risk on the personal side of an Android device with uh, Enterprise uh, is none of your business, right? And and right. not as much of a concern. Yeah, and, and, and it speaks to the, the maturing of, 
the technologies, of our understanding of the technologies, of the governance, all, all coming together. And I think that's uh, and let's let, let's like pivot now to to oh yeah, pivot just move on to your to your slides here around the, the trust network. I think this is really interesting stuff, uh, Jeff. So let's spend a moment here um, understanding how all that information becomes uh, you know insight. No, exactly. And this is this is part of taking advantage of that intelligence. You know, when you got a data lake out there and collecting the amount of data from a security perspective, you know, think about the data that's coming in from whether it's our, our unified endpoints, our identity our identity access, um, if there's apps from app intelligence, uh, even from other uh, services, you know, whether it's our horizon apps or or you know, it could be external apps, um, right? That you know, we, we we ingest all this data, and then on top of it, you know, with the machine learning and and the, the able to kind of predict and then automate, we are able to take you know immediate actions. And and our approach, uh, as it's been, is to go support the ecosystem. So if you look at the trust network partners, whether it's the MTD or the CASBs, if you just click to the next slide, um, you know, with those security investments that have been made. You know, our our objective is to take all that data, and then you know yield decisions. We've got a compliance engine that can kind of go out and re remediate and and send actions to certain endpoints and devices that need you know whatever to take place. So I think this is a great exa example of how do we you know leverage to your earlier point. We've got all this security investment. We've got little budget, but you know how do we take better advantage of what we have? Yeah, and I think it's so important, you know, that we, I think the people are sick of hearing me t talk about the most important thing is integration and automation, but this is a great example of that where it really, uh, I know that there's there's golden in the, the hills, I mean, that, the, that there's great insight to had if I just had access to the data, and if I can get to the place where I've got better and better ways of looking at the data to, and getting to a set of analytics that are that are intelligent, I can make better decisions, both from what Harjo is talking about, where if I know these 18 things and nothing, nothing's changed, then I don't need to restrict you. And also from, uh, hey, this thing changed, that's a marker. Now I'm going to ask for two-factor when you lo log in. Or, oh, wait, this is a brand new one. I need four factors. <laughs> I need a blood, a blood test before I'm going to let you in now. Uh, uh, I, think, I think both of those cases we're, we're all very familiar with. And... Uh, from the standpoint of, I wish I had the kind of insight so I could make decisions without having to, to make it a big deal. And that's, everybody faces these things, kinds of things every day. Uh, and, and Harjo, I mean, I, I guess, um, the, getting back to the question is, how mature do you have to be before you start to understand this as the, see the benefit in this and be able to start to realize it? Well, again, I mean, the tools are there. Is it, is it about uh, the silos? Is that, is that still the, the silo question of who owns the data? Yeah, it, it, could, it, it honestly comes back to the governance and getting, getting the yeah. capabilities to the right people, right? I mean, IT, you know, IT is going to know some of this, but from their perspective, it's all work, no benefit, right? And so yeah, how yeah. do you get it over to the line of business to emphasize the, uh, the, the capabilities that might be present? Again, I'm looking at the the data analytics and the benefit it provides. Obviously, from a security perspective, um, you know, it's a different story. And, uh, and, and getting, you know, this level of partnership and built is, is going to be uh, very powerful and crucial, right? The two-factor story, you know, that's, that's, that's a tough one, right? Um, so I, I don't think that story's fully been built out because mobility's place in two-factor to date um, has been as the second factor. Right? right, so you're accessing uh, something important from a workstation, and you're using your mobile device as the additional uh, factor in that security. So that makes sense. And for some reason, organizations think they now have two-factor on mobility. Well, no, you're using mobility as a second <laughs> factor for something entirely different. You're you're not actually doing two-factor on your mobile device. Um, right. And so right. it's not hard. I mean, you've got biometrics built in. You know, it'd be easy enough to force a passcode on the device and then use biometrics in order to get into an underlying application, and boom, two-factor, you're done, right? Yep. But they just don't think through that. They they realize that they're using the client app on the phone, and um, and so we we don't we haven't seen that fully played out even in higher maturity organizations. 
Um, and so it's, it's an area that we like to emphasize. Uh, an area of opportunity uh, <laughs> that we'll also explore in future events. Uh, and we're, we're getting close to the end of our time, so I'll, I'll go quickly through this example that I thought was, uh, I still keep bringing up. And, and unfortunately, even with all these insights, there's going to be new threats, and that's really where we want to be spending our time, not in the predictable threats that we can already identify and build machine understandings around and, and, and uh, remediations around, but in this notion that, oh, uh, there's still going to be stuff out there that I don't realize, and if I, and I want to be able to have what uh, the, the, uh, uh, our friends in the military had situational awareness. They lack situational awareness around the, the use of the Strava heat map uh, uh, for marketing when it was actually revealing locations of bases. So uh, let's move on to number five here, because uh, I know there's, there's a little bit we want to talk about here before we get to the end. Um, the advancement of uh, mobility in small incremental steps, yet offering big returns. I, I think I've got we got plenty of stories where that's the case. Uh, I know I do. I mentioned you do hard show. I know you, know, you do too as well, Jeff. Where uh, people made little investments and then came back with with big returns. Uh, but I, I, less and less, we have to make the case for why these investments will have returns. Uh, it's it's just, it's just the how to get it done. And I think it's it's a, it it seems to be the governance questions that we're placing here because we're still seeing everyone talking about replacing paper forms with mobile apps, pretty much the you know, uh, uh, table stakes on, on getting to digital transformation being a major initiative for a lot of people. Um, but nothing wrong with that. You gotta, you gotta make those steps, right, Harjo? Oh, we're, and absolutely, and we're talking big dollars here still, right, for large organizations when they, when they still look right. at something like their paper spend, their ink spend, and, and the time that goes towards something like that. So, you know, only the higher maturity organizations have we seen a really dramatic impact there, and they're very proud of it, right? So they'll, they'll be happy to showcase that. I know we've got a call coming up, uh, a webinar coming up with another partner of ours out of uh, Columbus, Ohio. Um, yep. You know, a long-time client of ours, and, and they'll be the first to, to rave about the capabilities uh, on this front. I'm a big believer in in POCs and proof of concepts here, uh, rather than a holistic uh, deployment. And uh, so, going back to that earlier governance conversation and IT enablement conversation, um, you know, really encouraging the line of business. And they're going to be doing this with or without you as an IT organization. Right. But but to try different solutions that'll have an impact measure. Uh, the impact that'll have, uh, and then really put together um, solid resources to be able to deploy it out uh, more uh, more wide scale. And I'm, it's coming off the backs of of that example again that we showed around the analytics and the single sign-on because that started off sure. with like a 30 or 40 um, user POC that had dramatic effect. Yeah, and Jeff, I mean, I, I imagine you've got some great stories in this too because I, I know I see it so many times where even though replacing paper foam for the mobile app is about as obvious as as the as the sun I, I still when people do that poc process they end up learning about benefits that they had no idea about you know that that you know there were there are operational uh, benefits that oh when i don't have this kind of rework or this problem then all these other things get better as well um you know we've got a great example of someone that uh did that and they suddenly had uh, their, their time to money their their day sales outstanding reduced dramatically because it became easier for everybody to, to have their uh, orders in right away as opposed to waiting till they have, were done at the end of the week to get this done. It, would, it had pure CFO style impact on the organization that they weren't even planning on. Yeah, I think you're, uh, you know, we're, and, and that's, that's the, the point where we're at as a, you know, I think the maturation of the, of the space, you know, we, we spent some time building out what we call a workspace value realizer and, and while it's a tool that goes in and, you know, builds out economic benefits and financial analysis, um, both in productivity, hard savings, soft savings, I do think you have to approach these projects, um, you know, as you're going to get funded from whether it's from the CFO or, or, or from the CIO and build out business cases where it's, it's not just about, you know, there's, there's, there's costs that can be lowered. Um, clearly, you can document, you know, around security and compliance, and then I think around delivering this better user experience and, and the line of business productivity and efficiencies that come from it. But we're doing a, quite a bit of work, and in some cases, you have to put a stake in the ground and go calculate, you know, the, the value that's been realized to date 
and then based on that foundation, how do we go forward into some more of the advanced concepts? So there's a lot of work yeah. around this, and, and I think it's important that, you know, we attack it just like any other investment from the business, building out very solid, you know, outcome-based business cases. Yeah, and, and that's a great point. And, and, and I, you know, I don't mean to, to, um, to diss people that are just getting to their paper forms now, but I think, I think you're absolutely right that the, the, um, the business muscles, the business capabilities of getting better and better at identifying these points of value are going to be valuable later on for being able to prioritize when there's thousands of things you can go to. You know, the, um, we still, I was talking to a client, you know, a month ago and they, they're still, you know, the logistics company still working on lots of paper forms when truck drivers, you know, deliver things. There's a lot of pushback on deploying technology into that thing, even though it, it seems obvious. Um, and, but the, what they knew was they had to get good at the, at the, the building the business case internally to be able to, on an ongoing basis, be able to, to continue to innovate um, and then prioritize which of those innovations are the most important and most likely to have the impact they were looking for. Um, and one of the things that uh, our, our, we've heard back from mobile thought leaders quite a bit, folks, and I, I just saw so I just shared this really quickly. If you don't know what these are, a user story is, you know, kind of, you know, and deploying that as a shared language between the, the business and developers as a way of thinking about how you're going to solve a problem has been very, you know, it's free. Everyone knows about it. It's a free standard way of talking about stuff, but teach everybody how to have that conversation and that you'll, you'll have that better conversations overall. Uh, so let's let's close it out there, my friend. So uh, 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 I, will, I will put these back up once again. That that short link there to to go get the paper that um, all of this was pulled from. A lot more insights there. Uh, first, Jeff Mitchell, thank you so much for your time today. Uh, I really appreciate it. Um, uh, we'll, we'll 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 look forward to talking to you again sometime soon on uh, as these things continue to develop. And uh, thanks for sharing all the all the insights today. You bet. I appreciate it. Thanks, Jim. Of course, and Harjo, uh, always a pleasure, my friend, and uh, uh, thanks for, for, for bringing some stories to, to bear. I, 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 once again, I'm, I'm blown away by the, the, the cost versus return on your, on your, your, your 2000 deployment and uh, how little it took to go, go learn some things and make some things happen that were going to make it so they didn't have to deploy laptops anymore. That's, that's a great story. Uh, good work there, for sure, man. Yeah, looking forward to gathering more data uh, on the final results there. Thank you very much, Jim. And we'll look for that uh, from everybody as well. So, all right, well, thanks, everybody. Uh, please do uh, follow us on mobilethoughtleaders.com and all of our various social places. Uh, these events happen on a regular basis. We appreciate your time and attention today. Uh, there is a post survey. We would love to have your feedback on the event. And feel free to invite your friends and family to join us in future uh, uh, gatherings. Uh, thanks, everyone. Have a great day. Talk to you soon.